of Green Gables. By the end of this summary, you will start loving Anne. That is my assurity. Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walat. And today's capsule summary is Anne of Green Gables. Let's listen to who has written it. Published in the year 1908, Anne of Green Gables is a novel by Lucy Maud Montgomery. Lucy Maud Montgomery, you know, is a very famous Canadian short story writer, poet, novelist. She lived from 1874 to 1942. The genre of Anne of Green Gables is children's novel and also coming of age novel. Setting is late 19th century in the fictional town of Avonlea, Canada. And the narrator is third person omniscient who knows everything about all the characters. And a little bit about this novel, Anne of Green Gables. It is a coming of age story of an 11 year old orphan girl named Anne Shirley. Note, Montgomery wrote many sequels of this novel, okay? She was inspired by formula and orphan stories, which were very famous during her time. Basically, this formula and orphan stories related around orphan children who were adopted by these small town people in Canada. Okay, you will understand as we move forward. And Mark Twain has called Anne the most lovable child in fiction. Okay, let's begin and know all about Anne. Setting is Green Gables, which is a farm in the fictional town of Avonlea. And the island is Prince Edward Island. And let me tell you, Lucy herself, the narrator, the author of this novel herself was born in on Prince Island. Okay. And of course, the country is Canada. And as I told you, it is late 19th century. Now, meet the two very important people in the novel. They are siblings. That is, they are brother and sister. Matthew Cuthbert and Merilla Cuthbert are unmarried siblings who live together on their ancestral farm called Green Gables. Matthew is 60 years old and he is an extremely shy man. He gets uncomfortable in the presence of women. His sister Merilla is a very strict and prim woman who has no space for fun or beauty or travel, nothing in her life, okay? Now, since the siblings are getting older, the Cuthbert siblings decide to adopt an orphan boy who will help them on their farm. See, during that time in Canada, being foster parents, okay, two children was very common. Like basically from an orphanage, you will call for an orphan child. You will raise that child as your own. But how will you treat that orphan child? That will be your own morality. Many foster parents acted very cruelly with these orphan children, but many kept them with a lot of love and care. So now we will know how do Cuthbert's they treat Anne, okay? Now, this news is gossiped around by their next door neighbors. Who are these next door neighbors of Cuthbert's sibling? Mrs. Rachel Lind and her husband, Thomas. Now, Mrs. Rachel is actually a gossip monger, okay? She herself is childless, but she's so outspoken. She keeps on telling, you know, Merilla all the time that how to raise a child. How can you, you know, think of raising an orphan child? No, no, no. You will just fail as a parent, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now wait for the shocking surprise for the Cuthberts. Who did they want? An orphan boy, right? They call for an orphan boy who will help them on their farm. It is the month of June and at the train station, Matthew anxiously awaits the arrival of this boy. He wants to welcome this boy, take with him to Green Gables. But what happens? It is a girl who comes out from the train. <laughs> orphanage mistake okay now this girl is 11 year old and her name is Anne Shirley oh Matthew is like okay did we call you and Anne is like maybe you did call me she's this little poor girl her dress is all you know I mean she actually uh, she, you know she's portraying the hardship and the poverty that she has faced until now because her parents died, okay? Then she was literally thrown from one foster house to the other, yes? And now she has come to the Cuthberts, riding from the train station to Green Gables. 
Anne is speaking diligently to Matthew. You know, she's very talkative, sweet and charming. So she's started to talk to Matthew. And Matthew is right now just answering in one words and thinking, how will we take care of her? Now, when they reach home, the Cuthbert, Merilla, of course, is very confused. What happened? We had called for a boy. Here is a girl. Now, this Cuthbert sibling, uh, you know, the siblings, they argue over whether to keep Anne or send her back to the orphanage. But her liveliness and talkativeness impresses Matthew so much, you know, that at his insistence, Merilla agrees to keep Anne. But... She warns Matthew not to interfere with her prim and proper upbringing of the child, okay? She's that stoic person, right? She will make Anne, you know, duty bound, right? Okay, so now let's talk about Anne's growing ears at Green Gables. As I told you, until now, Anne grew up in poverty and hardship. Let's listen to her past. Mrs. Thomas was Anne's first foster parent. Mrs. Thomas was harsh and cruel. She gave up Anne's custody after her husband died. Then she went to Mrs. Hammond, who was Anne's second foster parent, who used her literally as a maid, forcing the little Anne to babysit her three sets of twins. Imagine she's just 11 years old. She's already seen this, shifting houses, not feeling at home. But look at the positivity around Anne. Listen to this. Nonetheless, Anne is a happy child. She is freckle-faced, like she has these brown spots, you know, on her skin with red hair. Yes, she has red hair. She admires the beauty around her. She is charming, stubborn, and passionate. Her spirit is generous, and she wants to grow up as a good human being. In the town of Avonlea, she gives flowery names to lakes and lanes. For example, she calls the road leading to the town the White Way of Delight. Okay, so she, she's calling a road the White Way of Delight. Here, what is the theme? Imagination, right? Imagination of this little 11 year old orphan girl called Anne Shirley. Yes. Now, Anne acts according to her instincts, according to her imagination, according to her fantasies. She does not act according to the social co code of manners. And this creates social blunders. You have to listen to the few blunders. You know, there are many blunders that she makes. I have pointed few here. For example, Anne attends church for the first time wearing a wreath of wildflowers. She screams at Mrs. Rachel for making fun of her red hair. She bakes an inedible cake which nobody can eat. She almost drowns in the lake while trying to enact a poem. She lets a mouse drown in the plum pudding sauce. She accidentally dyes her hair green. And she prays terribly in bed for the first time. Oh God, Merilla has so much to do, you know, to raise this child properly. Will she do it? Will she be a good foster parent? Now, Anne's imaginative excursions are controlled sensibly and strictly by Marilla, who teaches her the difference between fantasy and reality and guides her to keep a check on her imagination. Here, the theme of conflict between imagination and social expectation is discussed. Okay, now let's listen to what? Anne's friends? About Anne's friends? Of course, she will make friends at Green Gables, right? Let's listen. Before coming to Green Gables, Anne had only imaginary friends. Yes, she made playmates in nature, trees, okay? But at Green Gables, she made real friends. Out of them, the most important friend is Dinah Berry. She makes her first best friend, whom Anne calls Bosom Friend. And the name of this friend is Dinah Berry. Remember her, okay? Now, Dinah is this chubby, pretty girl who instantly likes the red-haired Anne. The two, Anne and Dinah, have romantic notions about love and friendship, and they swear devotion to each other forever. I remember in my childhood days, even I was so romantic about friendship. So I was in an all-girls school, and I remember with my best friend, I was like, we'll be in touch forever. You know, I literally love you for doing this. You are so awesome. I mean, 
how we used to encourage our friend, how we used to feel close in that friendship, right? <laughs> I'm sure even you must have felt it at some point of your life. Now we are very busy with our growing up years, taking care of all the important chores. The school has gone, gone way behind, but the memories stay, right? Okay, let's come back to the novel. So Dinah and Anne, they have become bosom friends. But one day something unfortunate happens. What? Listen, Anne invites Dinah to tea and accidentally serves her red currant wine instead of raspberry juice. Dinah's mother is infuriated to see a drunk and dizzy daughter return home. She forbids the girls to be friends any further. And this episode of separation hurts Anne overwhelmingly, okay? She cannot bear, you know, not being in touch with her bosom friend. But thank God, later in the novel, Dinah's mother, she agrees. And uh, the friendship continues after that, okay? Now, let's talk about Anne at school. At school, this is important. A very important character is entering. So please, listen. At school, Anne is famous for rivalry with a boy named Gilbert Blight. Gilbert is handsome and smart, but he is foolish enough to tease Anne about her red hair. He actually calls her carrots. Now, Anne, who is very sensitive about her hair color, smashes a slate over Gilbert's head. <laughs> and this literally begins years of feud or rivalry between the two. Who to? Anne and Gilbert, right? You know, these two most brainy people in the school, most intelligent people in the school are always fighting with each other, okay? Now, eventually at school, Anne leaves her childish mannerisms aside and dedicates herself solely to her books and to her education. Although she loves dressing beautifully and looking fashionable. You know, there's a time in the novel when she says, call me Cordelia, okay? Cordelia is a better name. She's actually contrasting Shakespeare here who said, what's in the name? She says, I want to be called Cordelia. Oh, such a lovely name. <laughs> now here, the teacher of Anne, the teacher of Dinah, the teacher of this smart boy called Gilbert is discussed. Who is this teacher? Her name is Miss Muriel Stacy. Listen to her. Listen about her, I mean. Miss Muriel Stacy is Anne's school teacher. She is liberal and uses unorthodox teaching methods. This worries the elders of the conservative Avonlea town. Nonetheless, the students love Miss Stacy and Miss Stacy loves Anne. With her encouragement and support, Anne and Gilbert, both of them, clear the entrance exam and they join a prestigious academy called Queen's Academy, okay? So they will leave their school and they have got admission here called Queen's Academy. Oh God, what will happen to Matthew and Marilla? They love Anne by now, let me tell you. Marilla has never ever shared her feelings with Anne. She's been that strict kind of mother. But now when she hears that Anne will leave her and go away to study to Queen's Academy, she's very sad, yeah? So read, Marilla, who has now started to love Anne as her own daughter, is saddened by the thought of her leaving Avonlea and going away. Now at Queen's Academy, you have to know this, the relationship of Anne and Gilbert, although they are not, you know, talking very prim and proper with each other, the rivalry continues, but then it shifts from that enemy rivalry to a friendly rivalry. Oh, feelings of romanticism. <laughs> yes, that is what you will see. There's a movie also based on this novel. So if you have time, you can check it out. Okay. Now, and because of her intelligence, gets her degree in one year instead of two at Queen's Academy. And also it is here that she bags the prestigious Avery Scholarship in English. So she gets enough money. And from this money, she decides to attend a four degree, a four year degree college. Here the theme of education is discussed. And can you see progression also? How Anne is progressing in her life? Yes. Definitely there is support of Marilyn Matthew and definitely she believes in herself. She finds nature her very good friend and she wants to improve every day, okay? Now, around this time, something sad happens at the start of the novel. We heard Matthew was 60 years old. 
Matthew passes away at Green Gables. Matthew passes away after a heart attack, while Marilla is likely to go blind. Okay, she has a poor eyesight. She will go blind any time. Anne, who was closest to Matthew, feels real pain at his loss. Now, at this juncture, Anne sacrifices her ambition in order to do what she feels is right. Remember, she will go for a four-year degree you know, to a college, but she decides to abandon her college. She returns to Green Gables to take care of aging and blind Marilla. And when Gilbert hears this, he is overwhelmed with emotions. He gives up his post as a teacher at Avonlea School. Why? So that Anne can apply for a job there and Anne can get a job near Green Gables romantic relationship it's like love and hate relationship right now eventually the two that is Anne and dear dear Gilbert they leave their past rivalry behind and they turn into close friends and I have to tell you Anne and Gilbert will marry in Maud's later sequel see basically Mary uh, I mean sorry Lucy Maud Montgomery the author of this novel she wrote many sequels of this novel. So in the following sequel, you will find both of them marrying. Okay? Who all? You know their names by now, right? Anne and Gilbert Blight. Okay? Now, even at Green Gables, even, you know, not completing her education, Anne remains eternally positive about her present as well as her future. She compares her future with nature full of beauty, promise, and mystery. Here the theme of nature is discussed and we are done with Anne of Green Gables. And you know, I have given these important quotes from this novel. Please read them. I'm not reading them. I'm just opening this page for a while. You will have enough time to read it. These are beautiful quotes, okay? Listen to the second one. Next to trying and winning, the best thing is trying and failing, okay? Let's move on to the second page. Here also there are important quotes from Anne of Green Gables. Please read them whenever you have time. How did you like the novel, by the way? Wasn't it great? I liked it. These, you know, coming of age stories when the protagonist grows from a little child to teenage or adulthood. It, it is good. It seems like even we are growing along with them, right? Enjoy the classics. They make our life colorful. And here we are done with Anne of Green Gables. Canadian literature is on on our channel, Walat. If you haven't subscribed to us yet, I recommend you subscribe to our channel. Yes. And keep watching. Keep learning English literature. It is awesome. This is Hina from Team Walat. Take very good care of yourself. Bye-bye.